We are in for some very intense times ahead, and a lot of people are going through a major spiritual awakening. I want to share with you the actual meaning of a spiritual awakening and what a true spiritual awakening really is. Because when you understand this, and when you know what to do with your spiritual awakening, you're going to realize how tremendously empowering this can be for you. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interuniversal, interdimensional, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. So today I want to talk to you about a true spiritual awakening. See, a lot of times when we use this term, we actually only have a partial understanding of what it really means. But when you comprehend the totality of it and how it happens, which is exactly what I'm going to help you understand here, you're going to know hopefully exactly how to shift into a center of power that you've probably never had for your entire life. And that is the true meaning of a spiritual awakening and the true purpose of a spiritual awakening. And I want to focus on this today because we are going to need every single human capacity that we possess to move through the coming days in a way that keeps our body, our minds, and our souls intact. Now, a lot of people think that a spiritual awakening occurs because suddenly everyone wakes up to all the treachery around us, how much we've been lied to, how bad things really have been under the surface and the collapse of human civilization. And thus everyone just wakes up and that's all there is to it. There's so much more to this, you guys. And I'm gonna share that with you today because I want to help you understand what it means um, in full, because in full is, huge. It is a huge, huge deal. Now, before we get into this, I do have a quick announcement for you all. For anyone who has um, bought a Healy device, one of these amazing frequency devices with quantum technology, for anyone who has uh, purchased one under my referral link, or who purchases one by September 30th, which is Saturday, this coming Saturday, I'm going to be um, having a live Zoom call, a free call on Sunday, October 1st, for the people who have um, purchased this device under my referral link. I'm gonna be talking about how to use this to support you living as a creator from a quantum level. As a creator in your life, empowered at a quantum level of existence. So if you've been thinking about this and you're considering it and you want to get one by Saturday, um, that would be awesome because I would love to have you join us on Sunday, October 1st. And the other reason that this is um, a good time to look into this is because the Healy Company is having some major sales this week, some major promotions. So you can get a super good deal if you get something this week. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay too, because I will put a link in the description where you can go and check it out. Okay, now let's get into the massive power that a spiritual awakening can unlock for you when you fully understand what it is, how it works, and how to respond to your own awakening. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take a look at the literal anatomy of a spiritual awakening. And even if you feel like you are fully awakened, you're going to want to hear this because I guarantee this is going to help you awaken even more so. So let's begin by looking at where this all started. So when you are born onto a planet, you are meant to be whole as a human being. You're not really meant in your most natural state to feel like you have two parts, your inner part and your outer part. You're actually meant to feel as though that you are a continuum of who you really are manifesting in the planetary realm that you have found yourself in. 
your physical body is meant to exist as a vehicle for your authentic human creator expression. Your outward expression should be a seamless manifestation of your highest, best self. I mean, doesn't that totally make sense? However, on planet Earth, we are born into an agenda that is not our own. Clearly, this agenda is fake and it's not aligned with our human selves. So from birth, using a system of reward and punishment, we are taught to live a cookie cutter lifestyle where everyone is conditioned to live in the exact same way. So it's kind of like a conveyor belt lifestyle where you're born, you go to school for many, many years for, throughout your entire youth, right? Into your, into your young adulthood with the idea in mind that school is training for you to get a good job that hopefully pays well, even though most of them don't, right? And then you're supposed to reproduce, bear children, new humans, retire, and die. And that's obviously, that's the simplest description of it, but there's a sameness to it all. We're conditioned to conform, to comply, to obey. This is, um, it's a slavery system, you guys. That's basically what it is. So the reason I call it a cookie cutter lifestyle is because it's pre-designed, it's pre-ordained, the architecture has already been built into society. Everyone's been trained to agree with it. And what, you're, the, what the architecture, actually what holds it in place is a system of reward and punishment. So wherever you comply, you get rewarded. Wherever you don't comply, you get punished. And then psychologically, we're, we're told, well, you know, if you have a hard time with this, there's something wrong with you. If you can't be like everyone else, if you can't be the way you are told you're supposed to be, there's something wrong with you. You need, you need help. You know, you, you might need a drug or you need a psychiatrist or you need therapy or you need something or maybe you need punishment, right? But something negative is going to be put on you if you are not able to comply and obey and be the way that you are told to be and do the things that you were told to do. Now, this does not work for true infinite human creators because we are born as unique individuals with something unique to contribute. So what happens is in order to fit in with this system, we end up having to repress our true selves. We have to suppress and repress our true human nature in so many ways. I mean, think about, just think about school. It's like, is it natural to, from the earliest possible age, have to go to a building every single day? Oh, and by the way, notice that your time in school is going to exactly mirror what your life will be like when you have a job or a corporate position, right? It's gonna be same hours, same days of the week, same um, setup where there's someone in authority telling you what to do. If you do good, you get rewarded. If you don't, you get in trouble. It's the same pattern for what, 12 to 16 or more years of school, sometimes 18 years of school. And that pattern is designed to condition you to feel comfortable in a job where you have an authority as well, who is basically controlling a huge percentage of your life and what you do with it. And then your reward is to get a paycheck. So because of all this, we are forced to learn to exist with two selves, our inner true self that we're born with, our natural state as, a, as an infinite human creator and manifester, that's one self. And then we have to have this outer self that has learned to comply with everything I just described. So you could say in a way, the outer self in many ways is um, conditioned to be fake. Now, what does fake mean? Fake means it's not in alignment with your true self. Instead, it's, align it's in alignment with another agenda that you did not actually create. 
So the outer compliant self generally emphasizes the ego because the ego responds to reward and punishment. And essentially what's happened is for most of us is that the ego has taken over the job of running our outer selves. And after generations of this type of conditioning, the true self is seldom, if ever, recognized. We humans become collectively locked into a prison world of compliant sameness. And most people become so repressed that they don't even know that they have an inner, deeper, more powerful self at all. In fact, most people have learned to identify who they are as that outer self because that outer self is the only thing that ever gets recognized. And oftentimes the inner self is kind of in a state of despair because like, there's no place for me on this planet. There's just no place. So what happened at the beginning of 2020 is that the controllers of this planet shocked and traumatized the entire world with that health issue and with all of the requirements that went along with it. They basically blew up the entire system that everyone on earth had been obedient to and conditioned for. So the fact that people around the world had invested their entire lives in doing the right thing, doing what they were told, believing in this cookie cutter system of living. It's because the fact of the fact that everyone held that belief, I'm now speaking collectively, of course, I know it's not every single person on earth, but collectively speaking, the majority of people held this belief. So I wanna to explain to you how it is that everyone holding that belief is literally what caused this mass awakening that we're seeing. It's been the belief and the obedience and the compliance with that system that everyone was trained to support and be in, be a part of. It's the belief in that system that was causing people to hold down and suppress who they really are because that true self has no place in that system. So when that system began visibly collapsing, I mean, for real, on the physical plane, that belief got really shaken and that true self couldn't be held down in the same way that it was before. When people had such a solid, firm belief, this is the right way to live, this is the right thing to do, I'm doing all of the right things, I'm getting rewarded, I'm getting approved of, and all of that. When that starts to collapse and they're like shaken to their core about, hold on, I bought into this and now look what's happening here. Something starts to collapse internally at the same time. Now, this is a very different view of spiritual awakening than um, one popular view, which is that, you know, the light came onto planet earth and the light is waking everyone up from within. Um, guys, that light's always been trying to wake everyone up from within. That, that's been going on for eons of time. It's the collapse of the belief in this fake system that has shaken people to their core and made it very, very difficult to continue to repress who they really are in favor of a system that they now see collapsing. That's the real, the real deep cause of how this is happening. So the energy of the real self, the true deep, hidden self that had been repressed, the energy and consciousness of that self begin to come back into people's conscious awareness because the system of life that kept that real self in check was collapsing. Now, I wanna add something else because I know it's very tempting to say that, well, then maybe it's good that all these nefarious entities are trying to destroy us and the planet. Maybe it's good because if they weren't doing that, we wouldn't awaken. Well, guys, we could have awakened at any point in time, at any point in history. I mean, there have been beings that have come to this planet. There has been so much effort to wake people up before this tragedy started to unfold. So it's not like awakening requires a terrible tragedy. 
what awakening requires is being true to yourself, being true to what you know is true within you. So if you have a planetary population of people who just aren't doing that, eventually they become vulnerable to the sort of alien AI infiltration that we see happening on Earth today. And then bad things happen. It's not the most fun way to wake up. Like, okay, here's a silly example. Let's say you're sound asleep. Would you want to wake up because some horrible person comes in and they're destroying your room and they're making all this noise and freaking you out and you're like, oh my God, I'm awake now. <laughs> or would you rather be awakened by um, the peaceful light of the sun coming over the horizon and you just gently wake up and you're like, yes, this is part of my nature to wake up in this situation. It's sort of like that. So no, I, I am not one who subscribes to what is going on in this planet as being necessary to wake up humanity. I think what's going on on this planet right now, all of this nefarious stuff, is the actual result, the negative result of the fact that people on this planet have chosen not to awaken for literally eons of time. I mean, eventually you go long enough and you don't wake up. You know, bad stuff might start happening. But nonetheless, here's where, we're, here's where we are right now. So let's be happy for the awakening that is happening and let's take full advantage of this opportunity to come into full empowerment. Now, let me just share something with you as an aside. These controllers, which are off world and on planet, and it's, I've talked about this so many times in the past, I don't need to get into it right now, but, the controllers, they know this, okay? They know it's very risky to tear down the whole system. And then you run the risk of people waking up and going, oh my God, I'm not buying into you guys anymore. They know that's a really big risk for them. So that's why they're scrambling right now to find a way to shut everyone down, right? Because they can't afford this awakening for this awakening to happen. So this is why there's really no time for us to waste. We need to step into full power ASAP because these guys are not gonna just sit back and go, oh, well, I guess we lost, they all woke up, let's just forget the whole thing. Um, that's not gonna happen. They, they've got way too much invested in this whole scenario. Okay, so that's the big picture version of the actual cause of the current spiritual awakening that is happening worldwide. But now I want to talk to you about this on an individual level to show you precisely what is going on within perhaps you yourself or people around you or anyone who is having such an experience so that you know exactly what's going on and exactly what it is you need to do. So when a person first begins to awaken, they realize that they are living with two conflicting versions of themselves. The first is their actual, original, real self that never got a chance to develop because it was repressed from early childhood. And the second self is the false self that they no longer resonate with because they have now become aware and have reawakened to who they actually are as a human being. But that new self is still, in a sense, a baby because it was never permitted to learn, develop, grow, and create from its cosmic origin of existence. Now, I don't mean to say that the true self is like a little baby, wah, wah, I don't know anything, I'm just like ignorant of it all. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that true self was never given the space, the freedom, and the encouragement to develop here on planet Earth as a creator on this planet. That's what I mean when I say it's kind of like a baby. So what happens is a lot of people end up in this like existential crisis about who they really are and why this is even happening to them. Because now everything that they formerly related to, they now discover that they're not really interested in that anymore. So it becomes a spiritual crisis and an identity crisis. It's a big time life crisis. And the worst part is that so many people have no one to talk to 
because in many cases they are still surrounded by friends and family members who are not exactly awake themselves. A spiritual awakening can feel incredibly lonely. So here's what happens to a lot of people at this point. They naturally look around for something that can address this new, more spiritually oriented side of themselves. See, they feel it is spiritual because it's beyond the physical. So what do they see as they're looking around? Well, they often see the new age. And I know that's just a catch-all term for a whole lot of spiritual stuff out there. So if you don't like that word, pick another word. That's okay with me. And the new age looks like a safe harbor for this newly recognized sense of self. But there's a big problem. New age spiritual thinking will recognize this newly awakened self, but it often doesn't recognize things about their physical life and how that wants to express. So if a person leans too far into the new age spirituality, they're liable to encounter a different type of repression, a different feel of a need for compliance. They might feel a repression for what comes naturally for them on a physical level. Because New Age spirituality also has a lot of rules, agendas, and taboos. Let's talk about one of the more obvious ones. New Age thinkers often look at the entire human-made physical world and label it as bad. They label it as the so-called matrix. And by the way, you guys, the matrix isn't out here. It's in people's heads. The matrix is exists as a mindset or a frame of reference or a certain perception of reality that has been conditioned. People have been conditioned to see their existence and their reality in a very specific way. That way lives in their head. It becomes the prime directive and the prime motivator for everything they think, say, do, and feel. That's what the matrix actually is. What we have out here in the physical world is just a whole bunch of human creation. A lot of it really kind of bad, pretty bad. Some of it very good, but this is just human creation out here. This is not a matrix. If everyone could just get that, this is just all human creation, it would be so much easier to fix it, reorganize it, and make it way, way, way better and beyond what it is today. And another thing that's often said about the human-made physical world is that it's not important. None of this matters. This doesn't matter at all. What matters is your inner world, your spiritual self, and that's what really counts. So in this um, version of New Age spirituality, a person will definitely have their new sense of self, their inner being completely validated. But however, now they may have the opposite problem. Because now they might be thinking, <clears throat> well, my physical life is irrelevant and I don't need my family or I don't need this or I don't need that or possessions are bad and money is bad and you know all that stuff. So there's like a different kind of repression on a physical level or you have to eat a certain way, you have to behave a certain way, you have to live in a certain place, you have to look a certain way, all that kind of stuff, right? So now the imbalance is on the other foot. Before, the spiritual self was invalidated and repressed. The true self was invalidated and repressed. But now in many cases, now that people may have found um, a venue, a community, a way of thinking, looking at life that validates their spiritual self, they could be paying a price for that. It's like, well, now you got to repress your physical world. You got to repress your physical life. You got to invalidate your physical existence as you, as you experience it so far. So let's talk about a prime example of what I am referring to. Let's talk about the subject of money. Why don't, why don't we take that apart here for a little bit to see what is really going on underneath the subject of money? Because we all know it's very spiritual to be poor and not want money. It's very spiritual to hate money. If you hate money, you don't want anything to do with it. That's a good thing, right? That's what we are told. But I want to show you how this hatred of money and calling it bad is going to fully empower the controller's agenda 
to control every single aspect of our existence here on earth in ways that are so horrific, you don't even want to think about it. I'm going to show you how this righteousness about hating money and money is bad is only going to empower their ability to do what I just described. We have been collectively brainwashed for hundreds and thousands of years to believe that money is spiritually bad. You know how that goes. God loves the poor. The poor shall always be with you. That, that always gets me. Like, why should the poor always be with us? Why is it so good to be poor? I mean, there's real suffering in poverty. Why is that a good thing? Why is that spiritual? I don't get it, you guys. And then we have being poor is humble. It makes you a good person. It shows that you are not attached to the physical world. You should give up all of your physical possessions if you truly want to ascend. But here's what I want to challenge you to think about. Money is the energy that you use to create in the physical world here on planet Earth. And actually, a lot of good has been created in the physical world using money. Money is the physical energy that we use to create. I'm not saying there's not better, higher realms of existence where this kind of thing doesn't even exist because there absolutely are. But hey, we're here on Earth and this is how it goes here on Earth. The thing to understand is that money is neutral. People are not neutral. What people do with money is about them. It's not about the money. Money that is unused has absolutely no power to do anything. The reason that people say that money is power is because it's money that gives you the freedom to use your power and your intellect to physically create something. Now let this next point sink in. Have you noticed that it is the multinational corporations and billionaires who are doing all of the creating on this planet? Do you like what they're creating? I don't. But those of us who claim to be so spiritual, we sit by and we proclaim our righteousness for being poor and having as few possessions as possible because we can't afford very much. We are so busy being poor and righteous that we have no power to physically create. I mean, we're taught that the only thing you need is enough money to survive and get by, and that's all you should ever need. And then our creative nature and our creativity is repressed to make sure that doesn't eke out and motivate us to actually really deeply want to create something more than a roof over our heads and clothes and some bit of food to eat. We have a deeply, deeply entrenched belief that if we have any money beyond our own survival needs, that we are a bad and guilty person. It means we are selfish. This is so crazy, you guys. Money's just a bunch of numbers. Why are we acting like, oh, not for me. No, I'm a righteous, good person. I want to have as little as possible and I don't want to be able to create anything at all. They lied to us about everything else. Do you not think there's a good possibility they also lied to us about money as well? And now it has become downright suicidal to maintain this false belief system. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean. We are so guilty and so judgmental about having any money beyond what we need for basic necessities that we have actually induced a forced passivity in our lives when it comes to what is happening on this planet. We are afraid to openly proclaim a vision for ourselves, to want and receive more money. We think we are happiest living in our self-imposed, spiritually compliant prison of poverty. 
And that includes middle class poverty as well, because middle class is not rich either. These controllers have us exactly where they want us. They are absolutely going to use this stupid money guilt to take us over completely because it's our collective money guilt that makes it somehow okay for us to keep living with less and less and less. And that, my friends, is exactly how they're going to close the prison doors once and for all. Because we are so guilty and so afraid of having or wanting money, we are just like, okay, it's good to be spiritual. It's good to be spiritual and have no money. That, that's good, right? That's good. It's all gonna be used against us, you guys. This is the plan. And how about that saying of being accused of wanting to live beyond your means? Here's the translation. It really refers to a desire to live beyond your self-imposed prison of money guilt. Because this is really a mindset issue. Because if you can't love and welcome money into your mind and into your vision without guilt and without fear, then it's time to recognize that we are on the cusp of some very dangerous territory where these controllers plan to take full, absolute control of all the money in the world in ways that we have never seen before. And we can blame our ridiculous, guilty selves if we allow that to happen. The mind is very powerful. And if most of the people on earth have a lock on their minds that says, I'm a good person, therefore no money for me, there is absolutely no energy on this planet that's enough to counter the controller's latest nefarious and very deadly plans. Because we have made ourselves so collectively weak with this stupid guilt that we can easily be financially crushed and completely taken over. So why don't we start by giving up the guilt and fear that we have about having money? Why don't we recognize and accept that having creative energy to create in the physical world is our birthright? It's our birthright to manifest that. Right now, we are free to manifest money in our lives, and we better do it fast. We better adopt a financially abundant, welcoming, guilt-free embrace of being wealthy, or we risk falling into some not very pleasant pits of despair with what they are trying to bring upon us. Now, most people do not like the word wealthy. That is a terrible, terrible word. It's completely taboo. No one should ever utter such a word to anyone. But I think we need to get comfortable with that word because it equates energy and the power to create in the physical world. I mean, think about this. If you guys all had a whole bunch of money, are you actually going to use it to create something evil and destructive to the world? Of course you're not. You are going to use it to do good in your own life and probably in the lives of other people you love. Look at it this way. If somebody gave you, say, $1,000 tomorrow or 2,000 or whatever your number is, are you suddenly gonna take that money and go, oh, I suddenly became dark and evil. I suddenly wanna do bad things and hurt people. I wanna damage the earth and destroy the planet. Just, it just, it does, it's not some weird talisman that turns you into something bad. What you're gonna do with that creative energy depends upon your character your presence, who you are, your love, your heart, your inspiration. It's not gonna turn you into some horrible, evil person. That's, even, that's not even real. I mean, do we want the controllers to be the only people on earth who can think in terms of wealth so they can amass all the money and then finish us off with their evil deeds? Is that what we want? I don't think so. I mean, this is kind of crazy. 
We need to get over our brainwashed fear of having money and wealth before it's too late. Because if these guys succeed in their nefarious plans, we will never be able to manifest anything on the physical level again. It will be a permanent lockdown and a permanent prison. Now, let me add one more thing. This is not about who has the most money. We already know who has the most money. The controllers have it all. We have almost nothing. So picture that. These guys have it all. We have almost nothing. What is the energy of that? Who's got the creative energy, the power to create something physical? They do. Do we have much to create in power? Or are we empowered to create anything physical beyond our own personal needs of survival and maybe a little bit more? No. So th try to picture the energy of that. Try to picture the mindset. Those guys have no problem with money, do they? We'll take it all, man. We'll take more than even exists. We'll invent it, right? While we sit here, oh no, no, I don't want any money. I'm a good person. I'm very spiritually, you know, and I know that money is bad and I shouldn't have it. And if I have to suffer, well, that's okay because God loves the poor. So that'll be just fine with me, right? I mean, really, who do you think's going to run this planet with that kind of mindset? I think it's kind of obvious it's the people who are already running it. Don't you think it's time that there's a massive shift in energy in terms of that equation? Now think, let's just imagine something for a moment and then I'll get back into um, a little bit more about spiritual awakening. But let's just imagine something. Imagine if we were at the same level. Everyone on earth was like, hey, you know, wealth, I welcome it, I want it, it's my birthright and a very positive, receptive attitude toward the universe. I need the power to create. I'm a human creator. I incarnated here to do something good on this planet. I incarnated here to have the freedom to create and manifest something that helps the planet evolve, something that helps humanity evolve, however you want to word that. And you welcome the wealth, you welcome from the universe whatever creative energy you need for you personally to create and manifest what you came here to create and manifest. Beauty, abundance, whatever it is. Imagine if everyone had that firm position on planet Earth. Guys, that's a light. That is a power. It's about energy. It's about consciousness. It's not about how many numbers are in your bank account? Because you can have a lot of numbers in your bank account and just be a complete, you know, worthless something. I don't know. But it's, do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's power, it's presence, it's consciousness. It's like, I accept my presence on this planet and why I am here. I understand that I'm an extension of this universe that desires to evolve this planet and humanity as a whole. And I welcome the resources that I need in order to be able to do that and live the life that is an example of how humans are meant to live. You see what I mean? Imagine if, well, billions of people had that consciousness. Do you really think these controllers would, would be where they are today? Heck no. They would be like nowhere because they wouldn't know what to do with that kind of energy. They couldn't control it. They couldn't suppress it. They couldn't wipe it away forever. They couldn't do any of the stuff they're trying to do. So I'm making a big deal about this right now because while they have us all distracted with wars and politics and all these other things going on, meanwhile, what do you think they're doing underneath? What kind of infrastructure do you imagine might be being put in place right now? Hmm. Well, we can probably imagine it. I'm not going to say what it is, but you probably get my point. So we have no time to waste, guys. This is an energy situation. This is about consciousness and energy and power from within that manifests in terms of how we see our physical presence on this planet. 
Okay, now let's get back to the anatomy of a spiritual awakening, because now I'm going to show you the real core of what this means and how simple it is to know what to do. So on the one hand, we have the spiritual infinite self. And then on the other hand, we have the physical self. And both of these are meant to exist in equal balance for a purpose. They're meant to exist in equal balance so that you can be whole as a being, whole as a human. And there can be a seamless manifestation of your infinite, beautiful, loving self into the physical world of planet Earth. And I want to invite you to think for a moment about our system of chakras. It's very interesting that our chakras, all seven of our main chakras from the root all the way up to the crown addresses every single aspect of our existence on planet Earth. Because the root chakra is very much about the physical world and being alive and all of that. And then, you know, I'm not going to go into a whole thing about the chakras, but, um, and then the crown chakra is like the infinite, our connection to the infinite. And it's supposed to move through. And then we have the center of our heart, which is love because love is the center. And I don't, I'm, I don't want to imply that the chakras are always need to be seen in a linear fashion because I don't think they do. I think it's a fully functional whole system that functions as one whole. But the reason they're there is because they represent who we are in our wholeness with our inner being, our outer self. It's all meant to be one. It's all meant to be coherent. So a lot of the confusion that people experience around a spiritual awakening is the result of these two selves being incoherent with each other. And when they're incoherent, they create a sense of division. They create a sense of separation. They create that sense, like I said before, of two selves. And then they empower the ego and diminish the infinite self that we truly are. So we need both of these aspects to be completely coherent with each other in order for us to be truly whole. And let me, let me just give you a, a sample of what I'm talking about using the analogy of the breath and meditation. So think about this. What if you, your breath is actually completely seamless. It's inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. It's a seamless flow, right? We don't sit there and go, inhale, okay, exhale, okay, now inhale, okay, now exhale. I mean, can you imagine how painful that would feel? You can try it, you know, after you watch this video, just try it and see how horrible that feels and try to imagine yourself living as though you have two breaths instead of one. Try to imagine how it would feel to say, I've got my inhale and I've got my exhale. And this one's more prominent and this one's less prominent. This one's accepted. This one's repressed. I mean, ugh, it'd be horrible, right? It'd be awful. So what we want to accomplish as a result of a spiritual awakening is the merging of that system of the within and out, within and out, just like the breath. So your inner self manifests through the physical body because the physical body and all of its systems of chakras, all of it is this beautiful, harmonious whole. And that's how we're meant to be. So what, what needs to happen when a person undergoes a spiritual awakening is really quite simple. As long as you understand what has happened to you and why it's happened, and such as what I explained at the beginning of this video, then you can recognize, okay, I can see that my inner self, this true self that is awakening inside of me, I can see that. And then I can see the life I've been living, the person I've been manifesting on the outside here. I can see they don't exactly match. I can see they're not coherent. So guess what your, your job is at that point? It's really simple. Your role is to try and bring all of it into coherence so that, yes, you recognize that you are an infinite being that has awakened from within. But now that that's happened, what are you supposed to do in the physical world? Well, you with love 
transmute, whatever, is not in alignment with that self, with love and grace and self-respect, so that you slowly over time bring those two things into coherence more and more until you feel completely whole as a being. And that's when you will begin to feel that your human power as a creator has been restored. Because that's what we need to do, you guys. We need to restore our natural human power. The only way to do that is to become whole as a being and stop functioning like we have all these different selves or two main selves and this self has a bunch of parts here and this one has a bunch of parts here and it's like this giant jigsaw puzzle and you can't figure out how it all works together. You wanna to bring it all into a harmonious, coherent whole so that you can live with grace and inspiration and love and more than anything else, restore your power to create and manifest. Because what do we need on planet Earth right now more than anything else? We need people who can manifest things that are good and positive and beautiful. We don't need any more of the bad guys and the evildoers. We do not need that. We've got way, way, way too much of that, right? So why don't each one of us work to come into coherence with our true selves, into harmony and alignment with that self, and start to work to restore who we really are on this planet because there needs to be people standing on earth that are true lights, that are true lights. Because now, okay, I'm gonna say one more thing before I finish. You are a light by nature. We all are. That light needs a medium through which to manifest here on earth. The medium through which it manifests is meant to be your physical presence, your physical existence on earth. So this is way, way beyond just saying, raise your vibration, you know, think happy thoughts, be positive. It, yeah, that stuff's all good for sure. But the bigger vision is to be um, empowered and able to manifest your human presence as a divine infinite being here on planet Earth. That is what this Earth needs right now more than anything else. Now, you're not gonna be able to do this overnight, but you wanna look at it as a process. And the process starts with meditation. It starts with spending time alone, going within, validating your real self, validating that self that's waking up respecting yourself for that, loving yourself for that. And then explore, think of it as, instead of thinking of it as a big fat problem, right? Think of it more as an exploration. Like, I'm going to explore what this means in my life, little by little, test it out, see what changes you wanna make. But remember, unless that, that true self is manifesting on a physical level, it's still hidden from view. So we wanna have it out here that where it's needed, you are needed here. So I hope you found that helpful. And um, before I go, I just wanna remind you again, October 1, Sunday afternoon, I'm going to be doing a free Zoom call for anyone who has bought a Healy under my referral link by Saturday, September 30th. And what I wanna do, let me explain to you all why I'm doing this. I'm really, I'm just thinking about um, having a community of people who want to use this to function as creators at quantum levels to accelerate evolution, to accelerate our personal evolution. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about, and that's why I'm, I'm, I wanna experiment with this idea and explore this idea, which is why I wanna do this Zoom call, which is free if you have this and you purchase it under my referral link. Okay, so um, it's been great. I feel so happy to have um, talked about this topic with you guys with, uh, with spiritual awakening and also the money thing, because 
I really think it's urgent that we shift our consciousness around money. I'm serious, you guys. I think we're so weak in our energy with this topic. And this is the one thing they're going to use to finally get us, right? It's like the giant fly swatter that's going to end it all once and for all. So I hope you understand where I'm coming from when I say all of that. But in any case, um, there's more to come. And I love you all. I always enjoy being here with you guys. And if you did enjoy this video, if you found value here, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think might enjoy the topics that we discussed here. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell because I am here on Tuesdays with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and heartfelt appreciation for every single one of you. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.